The active users on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram combined equate around 3.5 billion user accounts, which generate a constant cycle of liking, posting, retweeting and sharing on what many may call a virtual community connected by our screens. In this technologically advancing world, social networks like Facebook, Twitter and Instagram are becoming a rite of passage to becoming a teenager, and therefore the number of users on these communication platforms is constantly rising. Having what seems like such a large connected group of people suggests that going by the saying, a problem halved is a problem solved, by sharing a problem with 3.5 billion people on this virtual network, it should have the potential to be solved. But things are not that simple, and we live in a very complicated world. And one of the major problems we do face is how, our, how we have treated our environment. Our prolonged diversion to protecting the environment means that the consequences will be felt by our future generations. And with the youth of today being the leaders of tomorrow, can we really rely on that growing 3.5 billion strong web-based community to be the tool to create the change in the future? As a young adult, I am part of this fast-changing world, which we are all in, and I do contribute to that social media statistic. But I do, however, feel that through my physical participation in various community groups and events based around the natural world, has enabled me to understand what it takes to make a young person really care about the environment that they use. Until recently I lived in London, and as I'm sure most of you know, it is more common to see brick and concrete around London street than grass. And it was only at the age of 11, when I joined my local scout group, that I started to enjoy the beauty that the outdoors can provide. Utilising a small park as the base for the scout troop, we were able to create a foundation to understand the natural environment without a tweet or Instagram post in sight. As a strong member of the local community, the scout group helped with planting some trees, and I distinctly remember how I was fascinated by the idea that this little tree was now in the shadow of its 20-foot ancestor, and by being left in the same spot for many of years without any human interference, that newly planted tree could grow taller than its looming forefather. As well as meetings in the park, we also went on summer camps. These can be only be described as an experience to really appreciate the natural world, as well as to get to know the community of people that we are with. Eleven days in a field with no plumbed-in toilet, a wood-burning fire to cook our meals on, and only a plastic sheet to separate your face from the earth below when we slept, really meant that there were no distractions to detract us from connecting with the natural environment and the community of people that was around us. But as I got older and turned 18, I did carry on with scouting, but I had to move as I went to university. And rather than use this as a time for me to grow my online following, which I must add is not very big at all, I thought I could use, use this as an opportunity to get involved with my new local community. Using my pre-made love of scouting and the outdoors as a starting point, I joined up and helped with a new scout group set up to combine scouts and the North Wales Wildlife Trust. With this newly combined group, we aim to protect the environment through local community involvement. This group was part of a network created to allow young people involved in projects all over Anglesey to connect together. And to see what other groups were doing, the Youth Forum was established. The forum consisted of a mixture of communities from schools to youth groups as well as scout groups like ours, we worked together to make a positive impact on the environment. We were able to work together to see how we could collectively make a difference across Anglesey. But what I found valuable about these forums was that they had a good representation of different ages, meaning that there was good balance between what could be called older wisdom and young ideas. But what really combined us was that we had a joint wave of enthusiasm for the environment. While sitting around the table together in the forum, we were able to play off each other's ideas and come up with suitable solutions to the problems we were presented with in our different groups. And in the latter part of last year, as a forum, we were presented with an opportunity to create a much larger project to engage the community in a creative way to help the environment.
So with the Enthusiastic Youth Forum, we racked our brains and came up with a few ideas to be what could be called a grand master plan, involving creating a nature corridor across Anglesey, using trees to spell words that could be seen through the sky. But when we took the idea to the streets, the public unfortunately did not want what we had imagined, leaving us to go back to the drawing board. We reconvened and assessed the public's response and altered our idea. Using their suggestions, we proposed the creation of a new site to act as a hub for the community to see how wildflowers could be grown and used in their own homes. And through using the youth panel, ideas from both the young and the old were worked on, and the physical gathering of the people in the room led to the idea be finalised. But in order to make our idea into reality, we needed to get more funding. And as an older member of the forum, I was able to play an active role in writing this bit. This opportunity was one which I seized, because I felt through writing passionately, I was able to create a much larger contribution to the difference that we wanted to see. But little did I know, this was the first large step into talking here. Our bid was successful, and we received funding from Grow Wild. Once everything got sorted, we started to create our site, and a few months in, the North Wales officer for Grow Wild, Maria, came along to see it. And we spoke about the great things Grow Wild did, and this got me really interested. There were so many different creative ways to inform people about how, how the environment they lived in and how they could use it. And in finishing my second year at university, the opportunity to do a placement mo module was available, and I thought it was a good time to push myself to get involved with something new. I thought back to my conversation with Maria and decided Grow Wild would be a great place for me to do my placement. So I sent a rather dubious and ambiguous letter saying how she met me in Anglesey, but during the holidays I was in London, and that even though she was based in Wales, is there any possibility that I could do a placement with her colleagues in the London offices at Kew? And very much to my surprise, she said, yes, that'd be fine. So for several weeks during the summer just gone, I had a wonderful time really engrossing myself in telling people how connecting with nature could be so beneficial. But what did I learn from all this? I feel there are two very key things. Opportunity and involvement. And involvement comes in the form of actual and virtual. To make a difference to the environment, actual involvement is needed physically embracing the natural world, no matter if it, that is conserving what is left, appreciating what is around us, or exploring nature's hidden gems. Enthusing and encouraging young people to actively see what is around them makes it much easier to make a connection with nature. The Youth Forum is a perfect example of how successful this can be grouping together enthusiastic young people who have experienced the great outdoors. Together, they're able to be passionate about how they want to tell people and show people how great the environment is and why we should protect it. On the other hand, I feel that virtual involvement is done by those 3.5 billion social media users who have a quick scroll through their current feed grabbing a short bite of attention on a picture of, a, of our wildflower site. But then they're more interested in that video of the cat falling out the window that follows next on their feed. And I think to create a real engagement from young people, to be passionate about the environment, it can only be done through physical involvement as a starting point. Social media can be a wonderful tool to help keep people up to date and in touch. I think the first step to making significant change with the youth of today can only be done through actual involvement. The second thing I feel that I've learned from my experience is that young people are never aware of their full potential. Through being given responsibilities and opportunities, young people can explore their boundaries. I never dreamed that from planting that tree in the small park in London would lead to me here talking today. And I therefore think that a slight nudge or poke in the right direction can lead to a snowball effect of great opportunities. Rather than scrolling on a screen, 
through showing the changing world around us to the youth today, we are able to ignite a passion and reason to protect the environment for the future.